Hey, this is Al Angelo back at you from A Plus Racing. Check it out, the fancy mic system today. Yeah, trying to spend money so that you can actually hear what the hell I'm talking about. Hey, I got my buddy's car here. This thing's going off to the lucky dog to win it here in uh, California in November. But he's got some problems with this front brake, so I decided that I'd go ahead and make a video on how to do the front brake job. Now, there's two ways that I could do this brake job. One, I could do it racing style, and I could change those pads out in about under two minutes guaranteed, all right? And we do do this method sometimes on the racetrack when we have to. And then I'm going to show you the right way if I had plenty of time to do the brake job, all right? But either one of them works. So I'm going to show you the, the first one first. So the quick way of doing the brake job, and um, if I'm sitting at the track or I'm in the hot pits and a thing comes in and needs pads. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, and I know this is going to blow you away, especially those of you who do brake jobs all the time, I'm going to push the piston back first, and I've got a secret way of doing it. And I'm only going to be able to show you if you subscribe to my channel. So those of you that are not subscribing, you guys need to go away now. Those of you that are subscribed to my channel, stick with me here because I'm going to show you the secret that's going to save you a ton of time. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to take a straight screwdriver, and I'm going to go ahead and set it right in here in this slot right here against the pad and the rotor. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start working that piston back right now. Check it out. The piston is going right back all the way. Now, once I've got it all the way, the piston's already back. I'm done. All right. That part's finished. Okay. Next part. Okay, piston's already back. I know it's blowing you away. So I'm just going to take off the bottom bolt. This is the bottom slider. So I'm going to take this back, take this out right here. Okay, set that there. Are you ready for this? Huh? I can tell you're impressed. All right, here's my pads. So take that pad out, put the new pad in, okay, I'm going to take out the back pad, got a new pad, well I'll show you these more in the next part here, I just want to show you how quickly I can do this, okay, Pin goes back in. Done. I can tell you're impressed. All right. That's how I do it on the racetrack. If I only got moments to do it. I mean, I did it here in pretty slow motion. I can normally do that in under a minute. All right. I can get new brake pads in there. I got the car back on the track and we're up front winning. All right. This would definitely work for the race, okay? But if I had more time, then I want to go ahead and show you what I'm doing if I have more time. Okay, so the brake job is the same. Oh, oh, wait. Those of you that haven't subscribed to my channel, you can come back in now, all right? So get everybody back in here. Tell those people to come back in that haven't subscribed. All right, so now we got them back. Let's go ahead and talk about doing this brake job. All right, so I've already pushed the piston back, so I don't have to do that, but... I, that's what I would do next. Um, the reason why I told my buddy he needed front brakes is if you look at this one right here that I just took out, it's pretty chunked up, all right? It's coming apart, it's been hot, and it's coming to pieces. He's going to race the lucky dog, which is a 1,000 miles, and so we got to make sure that, you know, he's in good shape. So that's why we're going to change him out. All right, so... In order to do the brake job, i got to push the piston back, which I already did. You saw me do that. The next method is the same thing. I'm going to take off that bottom slider. This is a single piston sliding brake caliper, and that's the most common brake system out there. So you could use this method on just about any vehicle out there. It's the most common, especially if it's only got a single piston, which this caliper has, and I'll show it to you here in a minute. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take that bottom sliding pin out. Um, so this caliper slides, can slide back and forth, and that's actually how the caliper works. 
Um, this pin is in pretty good shape. It's fairly clean. It's got a little grease on there. It's perfect like I like it. That's Sometimes they come out and they're all rusted. If it comes out and it's rusted or dirty or gummy, take it to the wire wheel, clean it off. It's got to be nice and smooth. I'm going to pop my caliper off. Okay, here's my top slider right here. Okay, it's in pretty good shape, but it doesn't have any grease on it. So we'll take care of that in a minute. I don't like to let these things hang like that. Um, it's a little hard on the line. So I just set it on top of that lower control arm out of the way there. All right. So, and like, again, this is if I have plenty of time to do the brake job. So the next step is I'm just going to go ahead and pull these pads out. And these were the pads I just put in. It's got these little anti-rattle uh, little uh, shields here. Um, you can buy these. These are pretty good shape. It's a good idea to pick them up if you don't, if you're missing some or if they're destroyed. All right. So this is a racing brake pad. Um, obviously because this is a race car. And so racing brake pads differ from regular organic pads that the race, the, the brake lining material itself has got a, a great deal of metallic in it to withstand high temperatures and, um, you know, the braking that we need to slow this car down from high speeds. So this section right here, this little thick part right here, is actually the brake lining. This is a part that actually wears out. This is the metal backing plate. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to run the brake lining so thin that the metal starts to touch the rotor. We call that metal to metal. And I know you've heard that term before. So this is a racing pad. Um, this is a Ray Bestis. They're great pads. I use uh, Hawk Blues, but my buddy likes these Ray Bestis pads, and that's okay because I beat him anyways on a racetrack. We'll give him the pads. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull off that inside one right here. We just put it on. Okay, so now I have this bracket right here that, that holds the brake pads. So I'm going to go ahead and take that bracket off. And it's, uh, by the way, on this 1.8, the bottom bolt was a 17, that bottom slider. I'll show it to you. So this is a 17. It was on the bottom. Hey, if it's a 1.6, they do them backwards. It's a 14. So on 1.8 cars, it's a 17. And on a 1.6 on a car, it's a, a 14. So let me take the bottom one out. Okay, so I'm going to take the two bolts off here in the back. And this is, this is where this holds the bracket on. All right, I don't want to lose these. These these two got stuck together. So I'll just set these over here. All right, I'm going to take this top one off. Okay. All right, so we got those off. I'm going to pull the bolts out. that and there's the bracket okay I like to put these right back where they came off so that I don't lose them I teach high school auto here man you'd be surprised how many times the kids lose those, those bolts I'm gonna set that aside all right so that brings me to the rotor I can just slide the rotor off now all right so here's the rotor right here um, this rotor is still in pretty good shape there's no cracks there's no hot spots. It's not, it hasn't been metal to metal. It doesn't have a really big lip on it. We could probably turn this rotor and reuse it. So I'm going to set this aside. And what we have now here is just the hub. Okay. So if you needed to replace the hub, you would still need to do all of these steps. You would also need to pop this cap off. And then there's a big nut underneath here. And you would take that off probably with an impact gun. Take that off. And then this hub would slide off and you could put a new hub in. If you also notice that this hub has long studs on it versus the short little stock studs, we use the long studs on all the race cars. It makes it a lot easier to put the wheels on and off the car. So if, I, if this was a stock vehicle and I was changing it to these, these longer studs, I would just knock these off with a hammer and then put in the new one, take the, reg, the old stock lug nut, this, this is a racing lug nut, but take the stock lug nut and uh, put it on backwards and then tighten it up and you would draw that all the way flush. That would be the way that I replaced those studs. And maybe I'll do a video on that one again. All right. So what I've done to save us some time is I went ahead and had a rotor turned um, here at the school. And I just want to make sure they're the same. 
So if I look at it, they're the same diameter, four lug. So I had the kids turn these earlier, and we're going to go ahead and go back together. All right, so that's the first step, okay? So the next step, and I might have to go get me some grease, is to put these little anti-rattle clips back on. So this goes like this, and you can see this, this rattle clip kind of hung in there. And the other ones kind of fell off. So let me grab some grease real quick. And I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I got the grease. Wash my hands too. Okay, so we're going to get to this. So again, here's the bracket. It goes on like this. And these little anti-rattle clips go on here. So I'm going to take just a little bit of grease on my finger. And where the brake pad rides inside that little slot and up here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease. And then the next one, you see how the, the bracket goes on like this. You see how it's got a curve like a wall? That goes towards the front. So this one goes on like that. Put a little bit of grease down in there, like that. Okay, a little more on that one. Not a lot, just very little, okay? So now I'm gonna do the top one. And the top ones are a little trickier because gravity here ain't your friend. So this one here is going to go on this side like that. So what I'm going to do, if I had a third hand here, so I'm going to put a little grease on the back side of it to hold it up. Okay. And then I just set it in there like that. Okay. All right. And I'm going to put a little grease on where the pad slides. Okay. Now I'm going to do the next one. I'll just cheat it and put it right in here. And this one goes in like that, okay. And I'll put a little grease on it where the pad rides. And I'll wipe that off. Okay. Sometimes people put the pads on here while they're putting this on, and you can do that. I don't know. It's it either way is fine, you know. So if I was to do that, what I would do, I'd probably do the inside one since it's a little harder to see. I'll go ahead and set the pad in here where it goes. Hey, make sure that you put the brake lining towards the rotor. Don't get it backwards because uh, you'll end up running the thing metal to metal right off the bat. See, that's why, that's why I don't kind of do it like this. It's kind of difficult to get them lined up, right? But I know a lot of people that do. All right. So it's going to kind of look like that. All right. So I'm going to go ahead so you get a view of what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and slide this over the rotor, okay, and go ahead and put it in place where it goes. Grab one of the bolts. I'm going to have to stick my big head in here. Don't worry, I'll get you in here in just a second. All right, I got the bottom one started. Okay, so they're started. So if you look in there, you can see I got my bottom bolt started, my top bolt started, and my brake pads in there. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up. Okay, so I got those tightened up, and while I'm right here, I'm really going to give them a good tightening. I'm, I'm sure they're torqued probably to 40 pounds or so. I'm going to make sure they're pretty tight. You saw that I, I twisted on that good. All right, definitely don't want those falling off. I've seen them fall off. When the top one falls off and you back up, the caliper falls back like this and gets wedged in between the rim and here, and the cart stops dead cold. I've seen that happen a few times. People are like, it won't back up. And then I know right off the bat because the caliper bolt fell off. All right. So we got those. We're going to go ahead and take our new pad. So you notice the roundness of the rotor, the roundness of the pad. Don't put it on, try to put it on backwards or, you know, this is backwards. This is the, this surface right here is our, is our brake lining. So I want to make sure I got it faced in the right direction. And you saw how easy it was for me to put that pad in there. Okay, 
So both pads are in there, and I can see they're they're fitting flush against the rotor here. There's no gaps or anything, you know, that's flush. So now I can go ahead and, and go ahead and get my caliper prepared to put on. So I'm going to take paper towel. I'm going to clean off this uh, pin right here. Now, if I needed to, I could just unscrew it, take it to the wire wheel, and clean it up real good. But this one's pretty clean. You can see it's pretty shiny. And I'm going to put just a little bit of lube on here. That's probably a little too much. Okay. Piston's already back. So I just put it where it goes. I slide it in. Goes right over the pad. Like that. Okay. Here's my bottom pin. I'm going to clean it off. Put just a little bit of grease on there. All right, put it back in. Just gonna go ahead and tighten up that bottom slider. Okay, I'm gonna come back, give it the squeeze. Okay, there we go. All right, so now this has got a lot of play in it. That's pretty normal. So the way we get rid of that is before that we would take this thing out for a drive, we have to pump that brake pedal. You gotta make sure you pump that brake pedal. I mean, you can tell the buildings around the auto shop here are all banged into because the kids pull out of here after they do a brake job, they don't pump the brake pedal and they run into the English building. So don't be running into the English building. All right, so we would get in the car, pump the brake pedal, the piston would come out, it would squeeze the brake pads against the rotor, and it would self-adjust it. Okay, it's not like the rears where I showed you that video that we had to adjust it with the four millimeter Allen. So this is basically done. This is a really good brake job. Um, I tried not to touch the rotor with my hands, especially when my hands get a lot of grease on there. That kind of inhibits the braking a little bit. But as you can see, it's not that hard. It's a pretty simple job. All the stuff on this car is pretty easy to work on. That's why I love working on these cars, and that's why I use this as a platform to teach my class. Hey, it's Al Angelo, A-plus racing. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. I hope that you subscribe, and if you liked it, hey, give it a thumbs up, man. And, Check out all my other videos. I'm constantly working on Miatas here and uh, want to bring you all the information that I can. Hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye now.